On tonight's special haunter themed edition of Chump, one of our deceivers once accidentally found a satanic temple. Tell us who you think it is by voting along in the chat. Let's find out who's telling the truth and who is a chump. <coughs> Haunter. Really? That's for Haunter. Concentrated the Welcome to there. Jump, everybody, to the Rooster Teeth Game Show All About Lying. I'm your host, Jeremy Dooley. And first, we need to introduce our deceivers, starting with our first ghost hunter and first haunter, Michael Jones. <laughs> Terrifying. On to our returning <laughs> deceiver and second haunter, Ryan Haywood. We're dead. <laughs> and introducing... The Trapper, introduced to Haunter Season 2, Trevor Collins! There it is. Now, only two people can suss out whether or not they're telling the truth or lying. The first being today's contestant, director, and co... What is it? Creator. Creator of Thanks, Haunter. Jeremy. He added this at the very beginning. Daniel Fabello! Ooh. I don't know what that was, even. That was something. <laughs> Was and of course, the other person road. is you, the audience, voting along at home. You are playing along and are a contestant here on the show. And if you're wondering why we're all dressed up like this, why there was that big intro, it's because Haunter Season 2 is coming out. If you're watching this live, it's tomorrow. It's January 30th coming out for first members. And uh, leading up to that, you can watch all of Haunter Season 1 on the site, no matter what you are on the site. You don't even have to sign in. No matter what you are. Yeah. You're okay. first member. You can be are a, you a zero you member? You can be a book. You can be a dog. An elephant. Ghost. Yeah, exactly. A ghost. A fungus. A monster. Could be anything. Hubert. Uh, but yeah, so here is the Haunter crew. And thanks for coming out, especially you, Michael. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Michael all day has been telling me he won't be here. He's got a car that it's can running. drive home. It's still running. It's still running. I'm burning gas right And Daniel, now. thanks for coming in, my friend. Uh, this Only for you. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. This episode, it's going to be interesting because Daniel actually knows you guys pretty well. He spends a lot of time with you on these shoots <laughs> and has watched the Achievement Hunter content where we tell most of our stories. So we have to really... I don't watch your story content. Oh, no. Our story-based content. Else. Yeah, everything What, what else. do we make that content. isn't he story content? Yeah. <laughs> we don't shut up about it. <laughs> but we're going to start things off and start earning some points with a game called What's in the Box? Oh, and before we get into the game, too, I just want to remind something else. If you stay tuned all the way to the end of the show, we have a never-before-seen clip from Haunter Season 2. Yeah to show you guys so that you can uh, get a little more excited for the show. Uh, all right, so as for what's in the box, one of our three deceivers has something within their box, something weird. Uh, two of them have empty boxes. They're all gonna give a one sentence explanation of what's in their box to Daniel. He'll then get to question them up to my discretion and decide who actually has the item in their box. Uh, audience, you're voting along at home to find out, to tell me who actually has the item using hashtags in the chat, either hashtag Michael, hashtag Ryan, or hashtag Trevor, who actually has the item. Remember, voting multiple times for the same person won't do anything other than spam the chat, but you can change your vote at any point by just changing the hashtag. It's that easy. So, one at a time, you guys are gonna open your box, reach in, turn on the light, and in one sentence, tell us what is in your box. Starting with Michael, of course, what's in there? I open it. You open okay. it? Okay. You reach in, we'll turn on that light. Push the light. Okay, I have, uh, uh, it appears to be a monkey. I believe it is a Curious George, as I'm familiar with them now. Uh, it is, it's covered in something. I think it's supposed to be blood. Uh, and it also has two, it has three tails. Should I keep going? Or That's that? it. That's okay, right. Sorry. Three tailed Curious George covered in blood. All right. Spooky. Spooky. Haunter. I'm frightened Spooky. already. All right. Ryan? All right. Open like it up, this, turn the, on the light. I appreciate this light, but there's so much light in here, it's not yeah. really... Yeah, it's, it's, just it's just so for, everyone does the same effect. thing. For, it is for effect. Okay, uh, what I have is a figurine of a skull, uh, like a skeleton, riding a squirrel <laughs> with a snake. There it is. A skull skeleton on a squirrel with a snake. And uh, Trevor, final item. Reach in there, turn it on. What do you got? I've got what appears to be a baby's, like a doll baby's head, and some blood and bones and a finger, and it has a crown on it. And it has a crown on it. Yeah. And a last second thing there. It's got a crown on it. Royalty. So there are the descriptions. Uh, at the end of the game, Daniel and the audience will tell me 
who they think has the item in their yeah, box. Turn off my the deceivers light. get a point for whoever they fool. So if they fool both the audience and Daniel, that's two points to the deceiver. Uh, go back in there and turn that off. <laughs> you don't have to turn it off. No, it's important. We're wasting batteries. Let me turn right. mine it's off. off. Fair enough. All right, uh, you can start with whoever you want on this and just question them up to my discretion. Do you know who you want to start with? Ah, uh, well, let's start with uh, let's start with Michael. All right, we're gonna start with Michael, the Curious George. Uh, whenever you're ready, go ahead and question. Is the Curious George wearing anything? Is it a stu? Actually, better yet, is it a stuffed animal? Curious. Can I recheck or it just? You can recheck whenever okay. you need to. Uh, it is not wearing anything. It's a stuffed animal. Uh, he does have. He has a note as well with it. Does the note say anything? The note says, uh... Hey, don't touch it. You can't touch it. <laughs> oh. The note says, nanners for nanners. That, is that one of Curious George's books? I don't or think so. Or something he says? I've, I've read a couple of them. You for said my you were child. an expert at the beginning ex of this. Well, because my child. He said he knows I of. I know, a, knows I know of. a couple. Knows of. Okay. I haven't come across that. I, I read the one where he learns uh, what numbers are. Okay, can you describe, I'm trying to figure out the best way to ask this question. The blood, is it dried blood? Is it wet blood? It's dried. It's dried it blood. It appears to be. It's like splotchy, red splotches. Splotchy red blood. So you How said it's a stuffed animal. Is he like felt, kind of? Yes. It's got like a soft appearance to him? How do you know it's blood? I, that's why I said it appears. I don't, it's not my blood, I don't think. I would assume it's red. That, that's probably what it makes him think that. That checks out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, it, man, um, tails. You said it had three tails. Yeah, there appears to be some sort of Frankenstein uh, additional are tails they, added. Are they his tail multiplied three times? Yes, yeah, it's the same. It's, it appears to be the same tail severed from an identical uh, George like doll. So you're telling me that someone found three identical uh, stuffed animals and severed two of the tails and attached it to They them. are sewed, yes. Sewed on. Yes. All right. That's all the questions I'm giving you for Michael. Uh, that's all you need to know about the bloody curious story. <laughs> Did you really ask if the monkey said nanners for nanners? I don't know, Curious George. Does, is that his catchphrase? Uh, it's, a, it's a monkey. <laughs> is that his catchphrase? It catch mainly phrase? says, <laughs> Who do you want to move on to next, Daniel? Uh, let's move on to Uppity Ryan. All right. Hey. Hey. Here we go. I've, been, I've been a lot less uppity. I really is, gave it to Blaine a lot harder. This is yeah. just Good like Lord. it is being on set. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exactly like this. This is a haunter shoot right now. They walk up to me and they start bullshitting me from the start. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, whenever you're ready, go for it. Okay, so... Ryan, what made you think it was a skeleton and not a skull? I can't talk so good. Ah, fuck that. That checks, checks out. out. That checks out. That checks out. I like he, he marked a check no, on his page. It, <laughs> to be clear, it was a skeleton, like a small figurine of a skeleton. Not small, small. figure, like like uh, Day of the Dead type thing, or it's got some like interesting colorations to it, but colorations. What do you mean? I mean like some. It's not just like bone white. It's like colorful. Stained or rainbow colored. Uh, like palish. Uh, I would call white there. male. <laughs> I mean, if I was describing a skeleton, I'd call it. It's, well, I mean, pale colors. Pale it's, it's an eggshell skeleton. Okay. So, so, and you said that it's riding a squirrel. It's riding. I don't. I don't know that I would say it's a taxidermied squirrel, but it could be. So it's a real squirrel. It's not a stuffed animal like Curious George. It's, it only had one tail, and it looked like a a realish squirrel. How does the squirrel make you feel? We're getting too much into the psychology. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm, no, trying to, I'm trying to see his reactions so right. I know if I he's lying. I hope someone ate good. <laughs> someone ate good. Yeah. yeah. Just to eat the, I mean, if you're going to. Squirrels do. Got it. Okay. And is Dang. the snake, is it a separate toy snake that's attached to it? Or is yeah. it also a taxidermy snake? No, it's it's this big. So I, I can't imagine that it's. The entire object is that big? The snake is in its hand. And it's it's more like a kind of a sculpture of a skeleton, and it's holding up a snake kind of like this. Okay. All right, and that's all I'm giving you for Ryan. You're ended there with Ryan, and uh, that just leaves you with Trevor now. Trevor. Yeah. Oh wait, I, have, I forgot to tell you something important. Ah. I'll allow it. The top of this is part F. You know, okay, you're moving on, on to on Trevor it. now. He's <laughs> getting into our like right IKEA ah. <laughs> F. That helps me out. Okay, yeah. right. so in Trevor's box, mm -hmm. describe it again, so, without looking. Okay, so there's a doll's head. It's a baby doll, sat uh, in some blood, just like a pool of blood. There's a 
what I hope is not a real finger, probably one of those plastic fingers just gen uh, gently resting next to it, has a crown, a felt crown that's orange and black. Felt Whoa. crown. Yeah, they're, they're not, you know, blowing the budget here. Um, and they're, <laughs> they're We've got cards. Be, um, We've got a card, people. <laughs> there appears to be a yeah. testicle on the other side, opposite the finger. How do you know it's a testicle? He knows. May I look now? <laughs> he is. Wait, hold on. He is of the male. Oh, it's, is okay. it a fine. testicle? It's, uh, is it like it's a round, sack? It's round. It's it's veiny. It's juicy. It's it, gutsy, and it's um, <laughs> and it weirds me out. <laughs> sure, look again. And, and just, I hope someone ate good today. Sure, look yeah. again. Uh -huh. <laughs> and double check that that's what he saw. He didn't. He didn't say anything. Might about be it. an eyeball. <laughs> yeah. Might. I think it's might be an eyeball. He didn't say anything about a testicle the first time. No. But it's now I not listen, a testicle. I went for the now one he thinks it's an eyeball. Rule. Now it's an eyeball. How are you supposed to know if these people are lying or just? Uh, oh, I think that every day of my trick. life, yeah, really. It's it's the I mean, trick. the director's eye sees all. Yeah, that's well, true. Yeah, yeah. How does the testicle make you feel? Well, I've discovered <laughs> now that it's an eyeball uh, upon a closer inspection, um, and it makes me feel, once again, hopeful that it's fake. Fantastic. Oh, All right, it's fake. That's Cutting you off there. Really <laughs> Good. Yeah, I, 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 I need to. This is not for the I, game. This is for my own psyche. I don't know if he knows who's lying, but he certainly wants to know a lot about our emotional range. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, I think he's just checking on you guys. You didn't ask oh, me because you, know you guys are they're freaks. Know. That's what yeah. you feel. I was right I was normal and restrained. yeah, and you know what? While the audience gets in the last votes, how do you feel? Well, I was told this was going to be a dating game, so I'm a little confused. That's fair enough. All right, so who is the winner so far, date wise? Audience, you've heard what you need to hear. We're going to be locking in your vote right now. So your vote's locked in. Uh, who you think has the item in their box. Daniel, um, after hearing all of this, what are you thinking? Uh, oh, so I'm not locking in an answer yet. Uh, you're going to talk thinking. through it, and then you can lock talk one through in. It. Is there anyone like you just outright don't believe? Is there anyone you're kind of... For some reason, I don't believe Michael. Ooh. For some reason. Um, that hurt. <laughs> didn't ask him how he felt about didn't it, and then you didn't, didn't believe it. I think that's where the trust ended. That's where it came from. Mm. And that might be a problem. Mm. That might be a problem. <laughs> um, the, uh, I don't know. I'm a little lost on this. You're a little lost on I'm this I'm a little well, lost on this one. Unfortunately. I'm leaning Ryan. Unfortunately, we're going to have to push you for an answer. So if you're leaning Ryan, is that what you're going to lock in? Do I not get to see what the audience is no, thinking? No. Oh, no. that gave it away. No. It's all you. They're locked yeah, you in. Gotta, they didn't get to see what you were thinking. Own. You don't get to see what they're thinking. OK. Um, last minute decision. OK. I'm just going to go, ah, man. I'm going to go with Trevor because of the crown, the felt crown. The felt crown is what you're going with. Yeah. Hey, do you want to lock that in? I, it's a flip of the coin at this point. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's lock in Trevor Collins. <laughs> yep, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, we got that going. Before we reveal who actually has the item, audience, who do you think has the item in their box? <gasps> Trevor as well, 44%. Oh, I also think that Trevor has it. That means it's definitely Michael. Pretty close, though. Pretty close mm. along the board there. Uh, might be the closest we've had yet. This is a tough game because anyone could have that item, but it's time to find out who actually does. Uh, I'm gonna count down from three, and then you're gonna reveal inside of your boxes. So, reveal in three, two, one. Hey! Look at that! You did it! Oh, uh, they'll get a close. Can we get a zoom in on that thing? There it is. No. Now you can see how he think testicle. No, I can't. Mm -mm. There's an eye. Listen, <laughs> you don't have my except angle. for the eye. Oh, uh, there. The cat uh, head was not immediately visible from this angle. No, That's but kind of why I just went with a black yeah. and orange. Black and orange uh, felt. Yeah. Well, he could have asked him for more details about the crown. That would have gotten it. But he got it anyways. A little snap decision at the end. Netted you a point. Damn, I had him. I had him. You were that close. You were that <laughs> close. close right. Audience, you also got that one correct, which means you are going to get a point as well. Congratulations. Uh, and that is going to put the score at the end of the first game at a one to one to zero. For the Trevor. first round. We got uh -oh. round. I knew that was going to snap on Trevor. <laughs> well, you already got chumped before. He did. He wants it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wake right. up every day knowing full well I got to be chumped. God. You got to be chumped. Tell you know what? the truth less well. I know. Uh, I do believe Boy Scout, well. they call him. That's what they call I Trevor. I just stated what uh, was in here. Poor, and that's I, exactly. And, and I got yeah. two questions. You should have. that's what happened. Uh, flubbed more. They get you. I, and I then how I you felt. Have. You should have said you felt bad about it. God, just remember, this took years. Of agonizing 
with you all. Yeah, Daniel said so, he thinks he knows. We some still talent. almost had him. Says he thinks he knows. I was trying to throw him off by like glancing in and getting. Oh, oh, well, it didn't work. No touching, no glancing. Work. Hey you, yeah you. RTX badges are on sale now for the general public, and if you get your badge before February 3rd, you're getting it at that sweet early bird rate. This is the 10th RTX, so you know it's going to be a big one. The RTX Animation Festival and RTX Podcast Festival are making a return this year. Shows like Face Jam and Good Morning from Hell will be making their first appearances also. I love RTX. I love getting to see all the fans walk around the floor and actually get to meet people and talk to them and put a face to everyone who watches our videos. It's great. We've got a ton of awesome stuff this year for everyone to check out, including a live show of Chump. That's right, we'll have our first ever live show this year at RTX, and everyone should come watch. It's going to be a blast. So don't miss out. You got FOMO? You got fear of missing out? This is how you avoid that. You go to rtxevent.com and get your weekend badges for RTX 2020. That's rtxevent.com. Don't miss out. We'll see you there. But there's a lot of points up for grabs oh, in our second game. Oh, so it's still look, there. It what really is. Doing? F. Here, no, it really I is know F. it's F. I, I feel like I, way, I told a partial truth. We're moving on to the game called Pushing the Envelope. Oh, uh, no, we're not. Stop. No, we're <laughs> Don't not. argue with we're me, Michael. Game number three. <laughs> we're skipping it. I have a bunch of envelopes in my pocket here. Uh, three, to be exact. And each contains a true fact about one of our deceivers. I'm going to shuffle them up and redistribute them. They could get their own facts, they could get someone else's. The fact is, Daniel will get to question each person for 60 seconds, and they have to answer as if the story they received is their own. So I'm going to hand these out. I didn't write this. And uh, the points <laughs> are changing up a little bit Here on this one it. from previous episodes based on your feedback. So thank you very much for that. And uh, here's how it is going to work. At the end of the game, Daniel is just going to tell me who he thinks is telling the truth and who he thinks is lying. If he gets all three correct, he's going to get two points. If you get two of them correct, Opening. you're gonna get one point. We're not supposed to. All right. Anything less than that, the deceivers are gonna start getting points. If you get none right, that's two points for the deceivers there. Audience, you're gonna work a little bit differently. We'll get to that in a second. Let us hear your facts. That's Michael, pull that look. out. Can we all look or just Mike? Yeah, you can all look, okay. but uh, we're gonna just read them one at a time. Michael, <laughs> what oh, is great. your we true fact about yourself? <laughs> you can see the paper. You're about to say what's on it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> My, so my extremely true, very true story uh, is uh, once uh, my my mother was uh, v visited uh, by the ghost of her mother uh, and told her that she was going to win a raffle. The and ghost then, of his mother was visited by her mother, told you're going to win a raffle. Yeah, All there's right? more. It looks there's more. There's, there's more. more. Oh, wait, we just need you to read exactly oh, what the blurb. It says. Oh, I, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, exactly. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, Ryan, go for it. I once almost died when I fell from a tree. Okay, and Trevor? I once found a satanic temple while exploring an abandoned building. A satanic temple while exploring an abandoned building, and that is the fact that you, the audience, are voting on who actually found a satanic temple while exploring an abandoned building. Was it Trevor, or was it Ryan or Michael? Use those hashtags to vote in the chat and let us know who you think it is. If you get it right, that's two points for you. So uh, a lot of points. Up for grabs. <laughs> I'm watching Daniel. <laughs> uh, Daniel, once again, you can start with whoever you want. Okay, let's, let's start with Uppity Ryan. All right, yeah. Uppity Ryan. You love Uppity, Uppity Ryan. Ryan. So uh, now remember, you're timed on this one, so uh, you might want to keep the questions snappy. The answer is short but informative. Uh, and so 60 seconds are going to go Wait, on. Wait, before you start, okay. what was Ryan's again? No. <laughs> Ryan, read it again. Let me read it again. It was, I once almost died when I fell out of a tree. Fell out of a tree. Ryan's almost That's died right. when he fell out of a tree. All right, right. 60 right. seconds on the clock. Ready, set, go. How old were you when this happened? Uh, probably like eight. Okay. Eight to ten. Where were you living at the time? I was living at my house on... It's a, the first house I lived in. I'm not going to say the address because that's one of those answers on security questions. I didn't ask for the address. What, what state? <laughs> Georgia. Okay. Georgia. Georgia. All right. It was in Georgia. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how tall was the tree and why were you climbing it? I was climbing it because I had the stupid childhood belief that you could use a small bit of fabric as a parachute. Okay. Mm. It did not inflate. Right. So, and why did you say that you almost died? In what way did you I almost die? Because I am alive. Well, yeah. Clearly. What made you think it was life-threatening? Was it a really high fall? Oh, it was a pretty good, pretty good drop. I don't know. It's hard to tell because I was a kid, so sure. I'm not sure what the relative height was, but it was more than my own height up. 
and I did fall for a considerable distance. I didn't break anything. You didn't but break I, anything. But I may have suffered a concussion. What kind of tree was it? I don't know. Tree. No, you gotta, tree. what kind of tree was it? I don't know. <laughs> oh, wait, it's it was a tree, tree in the backyard. He's not, a, he's not an arborist. What do you mean, <laughs> what kind of, I mean, like, I don't expect no, him to know that. How did the tree feel? Here's a, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let me think back to my 10 year old self. Yes, yes, I'm learning all about trees. Uh, <gasps> it was I mean, tall, it had a waxy writing, bark. Writing. Scribbling. Oh, no. I don't know. I'll help a little Stop bit. Stop scribbling. That could have changed the game. I'll, I'll help a little Things bit here. Up. Uh, <laughs> do you recall oh. if it was a tree with needles or with leaves? No. No, it was a leaf. It was a leaf, leaf tree. We like didn't have an oak or something. It was in my deciduous. <laughs> <laughs> did it? Did it have? It color? had a light you waxy asked bark. The tree felt. That was, it was very nice Irish. to climb. There I could have. I could have asked that. Yeah. I didn't want to. There it is. Maybe you'll ask me that this time. <laughs> it was a giant Christmas tree. All right, that's all we got from for Brian. Angel. He, now he's making stuff up now. Uh, who knows that? <laughs> an arborist. So I get, okay, next. Uh, next is, you're looking at Michael. Are you going to Michael? No, I, oh, I was looking at you. In oh, front that's, of <laughs> I was standing in front of Michael. Hey. I usually think I'm just invisible. Uh, I want to hear about the satanic temple. All right, so we're going to Trevor next, uh, who found a satanic temple in an abandoned building. Are you ready for your questioning? No, not at all, but all let's right. go for it. 60 seconds on the clock, ready, set, go. Where was this abandoned building and why were you there? So it was right next to my friend Chase's house. He lived out like on a dead end and he had a house for sale for like a whole year. And so typical high schoolers, we just wanted to get in there and see why it was empty. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, um, what makes you think that it was a, how old were you and what makes you think that there was a satanic temple? Um, I think it was like freshman year or sophomore year of high school, so whatever that is, like, what is that, 15? Yeah, sure. Um, and so we went through the, the screen door in the back and kind of waltzed around and my friend found a bunch of like all the way melted down candles and a bunch of just chalk marks on the ground. In certain shapes or? Various shapes, I don't know. They, they pretty much just look like scribbles, so we kind of ran with it and thought it was. Did you satanic. perform any rituals? No. Using the space? No, we all ran. It was like past midnight, so we all got spooked by it. And what did the house ultimately sell for? Oh God, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What what is, this That's guy, what this is guy? guy always at the end with a question that makes no this sense. This guy. Trevor? Yes? What did it sell for? Listen, uh, <laughs> actually, question. probably a good Answering amount. It was in a like a well-to-do neighborhood. Oh yeah, you know what? What we can turn that question into. I always like to change your last questions into something else. Look, I had two seconds um, left. You know what? Was it had an oak in the front? Was garden. it a large, like a two-story? Oh yeah, it was, it was, it was a it was big, big house? house. It was a really big house. Yeah. All right, so big house. Interesting. All right, Daniel. That's all your questions for Trevor, and that leaves you with Michael. Ah, Michael. Uh, Michael, do you want to read your fact again? Just you can just read it word for word from there. You sure? Yeah, yeah that, that'd be helpful. Okay. Okay. A ghost told my mom she would win a raffle. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So, Daniel, um, based on that, you have 60 seconds to question Michael. Ready, set, go. When did she tell you about this? Uh, after she won the raffle. <laughs> after she won the raffle. Okay. So, did the ghost inspire her to sign up for the raffle, participate. I don't, I don't think so. I think she was going anyway. She was going anyway. It was like one of those like uh, dinners that you can like buy a ticket to and then they do like raffles and stuff while they're there, just like for like to benefit something. Okay, okay. What was, do you remember what it was? No, I was probably eight, nine. You were eight? Yeah, it was just like, uh, I'm gonna go to the whatever club for dinner. Okay, um, what? Who was, does she know the ghost? And where did the ghost speak to the her? The ghost was her mother, my grandmother. And it was, she claimed it was while she was sleeping. She woke up in the middle of the night to like a bright light. She was like, I'm, I'm good. And you're gonna win, you're gonna win money. <laughs> and you're gonna win money. I'm yeah. good and you're gonna win money. Um, how much money did she win? It was like $200. 200 bucks. At a dinner. 
That was a good last question right there. Yeah. He didn't have time for the real right. question. Oh yeah, I couldn't ask how the raffle felt. Yeah. It doesn't make any it sense. Wasn't like, did this? <laughs> well, the ticket was. Were paid. there new floors did and they where use it happened? A or? six by six square or a five <laughs> by five square? <laughs> how many numbers were in the room? What was served at this dinner? <laughs> um, so there you Polish go. Food. There's all your questions in there. And reminder, all you have to do is tell me if they're lying or telling the truth. You don't have to tell me whose story is whose if you think that they're lying. Oh, can I if I know? Wow, that's confident. Oh. Uh, yeah, you can. <laughs> you can, and we'll get to that later. Great. Depending on how well you do, I probably won't give you any extra points, but I'll be like, whoa, impressive. <laughs> um, so, and audience, you're just <laughs> voting on who actually found a satanic temple in an abandoned building. So you still have time to uh, get that in. Good so, luck. Daniel, uh, after hearing that, is there anyone you just outright do not believe right off the bat? Trevor. Oh, you already think Trevor's lying? Yes. Because he doesn't know what the house sold for. No. <laughs> There's a few small slip-ups, and um, the fact that in the in the text it says building, and he changed it into a house, which I'm not sure that that distinction would have been made on the thing. But also, the house was apparently next to his best friend, but it was also Chase it, was his name. Chase, which is specific, um, but also that the house was his best friend's house. That's the way he told the story, at least. Maybe was, I misheard. It was the empty house next to my friend. Right, yeah. but before that, you said, I don't know, we'd have to play back the tape, which we can't do. <laughs> we play it which back? we can't do. No, we <laughs> can't do this. This is a monster. There's several reasons. There's several reasons, several reasons. There's several reasons that. that make me think that that's not And look at the evidence and check the EVP. Uh, all right, so I'm audience, we're locking in your answer right now. You are locked in on who you think found a satanic <gasps> temple. And for Daniel, we're going down the line, starting with Michael. So simply, is Michael lying or is he telling the truth? What do you think? I, man, I'm leaning towards he's telling the truth. Do you want to lock that in? Yes. All right, we're locking in Michael as a truth teller. Ooh. I forgot that happened, and I was about <laughs> to be like, shut up! <laughs> someone, like, <laughs> someone once said. All right, uh, moving on to Ryan. Do you think Ryan is lying or Ryan is telling the well, truth? Well, if I think Trevor's lying, then that means Ryan's got to be lying. This man can do math. So <laughs> I'm going to have to go. <laughs> Before you decide, this is still an F. For he's fear. No, it says F on the inside. There's a yep. sticker. There's a sticker. He's that says trying F. to communicate that to you. This is a building like a that you sell furniture. They're marked with. So letters. yes, I'm gonna lock in that Ryan's lying. Let's lock in Ryan as a liar. <laughs> and, and answer uh, your question, yes, because of the tree. Really? <laughs> because of the type of tree. <laughs> All right. Well, um, right. so if so facto, Trevor, <laughs> locking Trevor in as a liar. Let's lock that in as well. All right. I feel like I got all of these wrong. And uh, before we get to the actual answers, audience, who do you think actually found a satanic temple? 55% think wow. Brian found it. Man. I think that's just stereotype. I think stereotype. so too. Yeah. Is that said, I think he, it, well, yeah, I think so too. Well, I mean, yeah, based on what you did, then now, you think, the, yeah. Michael grew up, I don't know, in New Jersey, would, if, would you have found a satanic temple? I'll, I'll be really, a, like, I'll be really, I'll be, you know, honest here, a Jersey ghost is probably what would say, I'm doing all right, you're gonna win. You're gonna win. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go down the line and uh, starting with Michael, you thought Michael was telling the truth and I can reveal that Michael Jones was telling the truth. You got that one right, Daniel. Woo! But there's still good impression. If they're, all telling, if they're all telling the truth, you're still not getting any points. They're getting a point because uh, then you'll get two wrong. You don't want that. So uh, no points for you yet. Half. All right. Moving on to Ryan Haywood. Yes. You thought Ryan you sure you was don't telling want, a lie. You want to swap him real quick? I don't think Jeremy would allow that. I will allow it if you want to swap what? him. What? What's the point? What's what? the sanctity of the law? <laughs> he can unlock. He's got the key. You're right. Man, that was a test, uh, Jeremy. You know, what? you know what? You're right. You're right, Trevor. You know what, Trevor? You're right. I can't unlock him. You think Ryan was telling a lie? I can reveal that uh, Ryan was telling a lie. You got it right. Who's seen where you are? <laughs> Why is that you mean, little that Trevor was all he was buying in. Answer. We that had him. <laughs> we had him. <laughs> you love being a chump. That's why. I, that's why I specifically oh. pulled that one back. That's I was unbelievable. Like, oh, they are, he was yeah. teetering. <laughs> we had him. <laughs> I didn't think oh. he was gonna change it. <laughs> it was Ryan that found it. Ryan found the satanic temple. He all around the, the stories and went. Of course it's Ryan. Why did you tell that story? You get the points. I didn't hear it until he introed the show for the first time you know and went, oh, you know well. what's funny is that it was <laughs> yeah. a specific building and we changed it to yeah, just generic. Sorry.
barrack building, so that way this story could go anywhere. It was a, it was originally a dorm. dorm. It was a dorm. It was a dorm. Yeah. But we changed it because Michael didn't I go said, to college. I said I hate school. <laughs> that's Get literally away from me. That's why we changed it. But uh, <laughs> we'll hear that actual story from Ryan in the post show chump change, where he can uh, talk about the actual Satanic Temple. But well, that's two points for both the contestant. And for the that audience, good. that's going to bring it to uh, three to three to zero. We had that until you. Uh, no, I think you failed the line. All right, so we're going into our final game, going for it. which is called going. What's This Do? <laughs> the way this works is I have a very bizarre item, and it is right down here. Let's grab both parts of it. Sure. We got them right where hey. we want them, boys. So, Looks good. Hey. Oh, that's what that thing was. Yeah. So, uh, Dan, you can have a look at it. It is it is uh, broken here. Uh, uh, no. Yeah, Bigfoot Christian. Did that release the seconds before we started? Did this release the spirits? Uh, well, if that's what it do, but we don't know. Uh, so here's one of them actually knows what this item does or is used for, and they're going to be telling you that. The other two are making up a use for this item. It's up to you to determine who's telling the truth about it. Audience are doing the same thing by voting along in the chat. Uh, Deceivers, if you manage to fool both of them, uh, we'll decide what happens. Because right now you can't catch up, but, you know, we got we to gotta make it sporting here. Jeremy. Yeah. I think the, can you get a close-up of this for the audience? Do they need to see the, like... Intricate you're not details. the you're not the director of this. Well, okay. they listened to him though. They did it, so I think yep. he is. Oh, man. He's directed that shot. And he's now the co-creator. I'll be honest. Of the show. I'm just the guy standing. I'm not the director either. I don't care. And you see right here, here. Uh, is that's right where uh, Christian broke it. Does this move too? He stomped on seconds oh, before oh, the move. Start, oh, it moves. Uh, or it's loose. It's oh, seconds that's a real. That's a tell. That's a telltale move right there. Smashed yeah. it to pieces. All right, so I'm gonna take that from you now and hand this over to. Michael. Ah! Uh, starting with Michael, just a quick one sentence description. One sentence, not enough. All right, what's that do? Uh, uh, close. You said it let uh, the spirits out. This is a. Uh, this actually wards them. This keeps it wards spirits and says, "Get out of here. I'm I'm coming in here. You know, I want to cleanse evil spirits and make sure it's good. So." It keeps or pushes spirits away. No, it's like it's good for you and like you have it and it's like uh, good energy and it keeps the baddies away, you know? Oh, so it's to better yourself. Yeah. Okay. You know? All right. There's Ryan? nothing bad in here. Ryan? It's all, it's all good. good. It's all good is it's all what good. I'm saying. Ryan, what's it do? But it's broken <clears throat> so it doesn't work anymore. Uh, well, Daniel, I have actually you to thank for knowing what this is uh, because this is part of uh, one of the devices that you would use for creating a specific kind of summoning circle. Uh, it's got seven different arms on it, so it's for creating a heptagram. Six. No, and each six of, well, okay, it used to be. All right, I'll, I'll stop you there. <laughs> oh, I'm you sorry, get I'm, I was getting detail. too detailed. Because this, this uh, man's going to get to question you, but yeah, for a summoning circle. And then, uh, Trevor? Load. So this acts like similar to a dowsing rod in the sense that you um, attach it to a string, and if it starts to spin, that there's some sort of activity there. All right, and there we go, kind of like a dousing rod. So uh, there you go, it is for some mystical use, uh, something that we might want to use on Haunter. No, I'd rather you guys okay. keep it. Okay, okay uh, keep so uh, Daniel, okay. who do you want to start with? <laughs> Whoever is questioning can have the item if he wants to better point to what it does in the show. Yeah. Don't eat it. Um, Jeremy, you pick. Who should I question first? What the hell, has that ever happened Whoa. before? Let's start with Trey. You're entering He's bias going. into the arena. <laughs> Non-standard. Okay, the Trey. only reason is because you started the first game by going that way. So we're going to go that way. Do you want this? All right. Sure, I'll hold it. There you go. So on to Trevor first, and you get to question them up to my discretion. Easy. Up to your discretion. Yeah. Okay. So I'll tell you to move on when I think you should move on. And remember, audience, using the hashtags, who is telling the truth about this item? Okay. Daniel, whenever you're ready, go for it. Trevor, you do have an engineering background, correct? Yeah. So how do you keep that from spinning? Like, well, without you, the, the You force. have to be very gentle, obviously, like, the wind or whatever will move it. So it's, it's, it's kind of a gimmick, if I'm being honest, but, like, whoa, you gotta make sure you're inside. Whoa, you're derailing our whole whoa, whoa, whoa. show! Next, he's gonna say Ouija board. Go surreal! Uh, but, yeah, like, you just lift it up, you just have to be very careful. You steady it with your left hand, and then you let go and just... And what does it mean when it... How do you know it's pointing to something if it has... It doesn't point to anything. It just starts to spin gently when there's some sort of activity acting upon Does this item. Does spinning mean a, uh, like a specific answer? Like, is a spin yes? It's usually more like if you're looking for a spiritual energy, this will, like, the... Oh! It's supposed to kind of feel that and start to move. Why not use, like, I don't know, 
I was gonna say a fan, you know, or just something that like. Because it's got crystals. Because it's got crystals. Uh, because you don't want to lie to yourself. I don't know. Wind. Wind. Turn. He brought up wind. Did I was you just like, what's the that? difference? I don't. Why that said, we use some thing. crazy items on yeah, Hunter. We I mean, do. Yeah. And we honestly, like it kind of a dozen things per episode. It sounds so. like a. Uh, Primitive is a weird word to use, but a primitive like EMF reader, a, like a non-electronic tool. You know what I mean? Like it reacts if there's energy in the area. Yeah. Sure, sure. I did a lot of research on dowsing rods. Um, I, I liken so. it to that because I don't really know. Like the, people like swing gems around maps to find areas. It's like it's kind of like one of those where you kind of let gravity and. You got some paper. Okay. Spear trash. All right. Yeah, I threw it. Oh wait, We're, one oh, more question. Okay, fine. I'll let you have one. One more question. What do the colors signify? I don't know, honestly. I don't think there is a signification to each colors. Like, I think it's just to embody every piece of energy or something. I bet it looks cool. I don't know that. Is. What, one more question. You need to be stopped. <laughs> well, you All have right. the ability to stop it. Yeah, you do. You're stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> That's a chuckle. That's a chuckle. That's a chuckle that right there. Chuckle. Hit that chuckle button. Hey, did first you chuckle? chuckle. First chuckle, first yep. chuckle of the episode. The hit facts. that chuckle. If you want to be notified of future episodes, hit the chuckle. Miss uh, you guys. It's yeah, great. yeah. <laughs> this is us. We're on a chuckle this is us. now. Uh, all right, so moving on to uh, Ryan, which said this is used for a summoning circle. Summoning you, circle, right. You right. can question him up to you, uh, to my discretion. I keep saying yours. That's not true. Um, whenever you're ready, hit him with the questions. How do you feel holding that, Ryan? I feel uh, like I'm sad that it's broken now. Christian. And it will never be whole again. Okay. Um, not what I expected. Um, <laughs> what? What did you? What expect? did he expect? Are yeah. there specific things, spirits, types of I don't know entities that that is used for, or is it a general? I mean, it's a it's for creating a generalized spirit summoning circle. Uh, the various arms are. Uh, representative of the fundamental forces of nature. I mean, you can tell the coloration. Like, we got a couple. Go through them. I can't. <laughs> Give it a whirl. You can tell. Give it a whirl. Look, I remember like three or four of them. Uh, you've got, if you'll remember, we did it actually I a do. dumbed down version of this that probably never made it into an episode. I do not really. believe it made there the There will cut. be a deleted scene if people stay tuned, not to, <laughs> yeah. to, to other future shows of Haunter, the recap, things like that, we'll probably show that. Which we went with a pentagram. Uh, because it was a little bit easier and we had less people. This yeah. is a heptagram, so it's seven-sided. It's for a little bit more complicated summoning circles, but the more complicated the geometry, the more you have to, like, commit to it. Yeah. Uh, and we didn't have enough people to stand at all the different points, unless you wanted to come join. But, uh, yeah, it's like, you know, air, fire, water, ground. And the ground one is Jeff. Probably heart. I don't know. Maybe where, Captain Planet comes out. Where do you place it in the summoning circle? This goes in the center. So not only does it serve as kind of a focal point for the energies, but it, the arms of it help you to uh, locate the various positions around the circle where your other secondary uh, like devices go. I'll allow you one more question, and that's it. Uh, what does the non-spinning crystal at the top. What does that signify or do? You ever seen uh, like one of the solar farms where they have like all the different mirrors that are reflecting energy up to a central location? No. Okay, well basically that's what it does. <laughs> Read a book. <laughs> <laughs> and how does that make you feel? That yeah, you how does that make that? you feel that you don't know? Uh, yeah. Energy, you gotta think of lines of energy, you know how they lay these things out, and they flow into this device and then are focused up to this common point. So that is kind of where the gateway opens. Okay. And there you go. And that's that. So uh, last we're left with Michael with his uh, good vibes device. And um, look at that. He's feeling better already. Daniel, you may begin your questioning of Michael. Um, <clears throat> Michael, what would you say it does? Does again? It's like to ward off, uh, like, you know, negative energies and, and you know, like... Uh, like, as you ooh, enter, I'm good. <laughs> is this as you're like entering a room, a new space, or is this something you keep? In, I think like, it's it's in like a, just like an in general thing. I'd hold it. You'd you know? hold it. I'm just you know, if I'm if I'm going somewhere, I want the the good vibes with me. But that doesn't seem like something that's wieldable. It's I'm holding it right now though. Sure, so. but not, not everywhere. That, you're not well, going to the also, grocery he's store. He's two handing it just because Christian broke it. I'm I want to hammer yeah, that home. I'm just saying, like if like this is a thing that's like, I just want to keep me feeling good. I want to have it. I'm gonna leave it somewhere. Yeah. You know? They put it in a bag or something. I got a pocket here I could stick it in. It's plenty. You know? 
Okay. Uh, what oh, do the what nice. do the colors signify? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Questioning Michael's gonna be very to, hard on this if one. If I had to guess, I was gonna do what he did. And he already would did. you? Okay. Okay. Would you? They look cool. Would you? Probably that, right? They're like. <laughs> Here's the thing, Daniel. This is what the different colors are. They want people to buy it, right? So right. Like, right. What kind of store color. would you find that in? Uh, where would I find it? Yeah. Easy. Amazon. Okay. That's where I get everything. Fair enough. Wh who would you buy this? Would you buy that for someone? And if, even if you wouldn't, who would you get it for? I'd probably, I would get it for some, somebody, uh, like Lindsay. She'd probably be into this. Probably be into that. She's weird. You've seen it. Did you see the reaction from Ryan and Trevor when I asked that last question? I didn't, because I'm very you were just, telling. It's I'm like, is this Christmas? So when you I'm were, looking you right in the eye, because I'm respectful. When you were talking about, it, like, you. boosting yourself and anything like, and stuff like that, and warding off. Yeah. Evil spirits. So, is it supposed to boost anything specific, like your luck or your like health or anything like that? I think I think health is supposed to like get your get your get your juices flowing. Get your, juices get your vibes flowing. flowing. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. maybe you keep it in your gym bag and you just get one more pump. <laughs> maybe. That's, that's it. Maybe. Uh, is it <laughs> maybe. I, I'm adding that in. I'm, I'm not cutting you, know, you off, Daniel. I'm limited, cutting him off. I was given a no more pump. amount no more of pump. information I'm stopping about Michael. what no the pump. device is. <laughs> okay. some, so I just have to fill some gaps. You All know right. what I mean? I Audience, I'm not an expert. You've heard the descriptions uh, of what this thing does. You've heard the answers given. Uh, Daniel has a little time to think this over. Um, well, uh, Jeremy, let me ask you something. Yeah. Uh, as they deliberate, the uh, the point of this exercise for them is to is to lie to me, right? Well, two of them, yeah. If they get points, yeah, they get points if they successfully lie to yeah, me. Yeah, but so um, legally, the person who knows the truth can't lie to you. It has to be telling the truth. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty but, it's pretty brutal. And they they don't want me to pick somebody else. They want you to be wrong. Okay. If you're wrong and the audience is wrong, that's two points for them, which I might be inclined to make three. Gotcha. Just, okay. just for how good they've done. All right, audience, I haven't done with that question that's out of the way. Points. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can tell you how, how I'm feeling about it, though. But if we're not, in, I'll get into that. <laughs> not interested. He almost said, not Do you want to hold interested. it? It's broken, though. <laughs> audience, you're locked in. Your answer is locked in. That is it for you. Daniel, how are you feeling about it? Okay, so here's my initial reaction. Yeah. Uh, even from the beginning. Ryan was too good at explaining it. That's what I think. Well, he also is the state. Now you're saying man. too good to be a liar? To or be too... a truth teller. So on You think it was hand, so good that he's lying? I didn't, yes. know, too much. I didn't know what type of tree I fell out of at eight years old. That's what Not I enough think. detail, too okay. many details? The, the problem know, with, with Trevor's lie is that I don't think that that could be used as a dowsing rod, given what I know. Okay. Which is making me lean towards Michael. So I'm leaning towards Michael. You're leaning toward that. <laughs> that mass right, right there. All right. I it's it. between Michael and Ryan is what I'm thinking. Well, I'll be Daniel, I'm going to have you. to push you for an answer then. I'm going to say it's broken. Michael's telling the truth. Broken. Michael is telling the truth. Get that one last pump in there. You want to lock that in? Pump away. Pump away. I That's think that means yes. The kids Let's say. lock that in. Get this and you pump, pump away. Pump away. Ooh. It's actually a seven. Is there a tiebreaker if they tie? Uh, no, you just don't want to lose. Got it. Um, audience, Die. what did you think? Who was telling the truth about the item? Oh, oh 44 close. to 42, Ooh. and also Trevor showed up. Trevor's <laughs> <Nice>. uh, <laughs> been showing up the whole right. game. That's 44% uh, for Ryan. Audience is going for Ryan uh, with his summoning, uh, an expert you on wanna, summoning circles. You, you want to change your hand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Trevor, you want to chime in? Jeremy, you want to chime in? I can reveal. <gasps> That the person telling the truth about this item was Mr. Michael Jones. Oh! You did it. You, you did the clean that, sweep. That it is what you a single time. Yeah. And you got the point. Ryan, there. you were too specific. <laughs> no, I mean, I, he was, what type of tree? I don't know. I like literally, <laughs> you, literally you did research on that stuff. Yeah. I was believing you listening to that. I tried to lie <laughs> you and truth tell as job. much as I could. The uh, look Jeremy and I shared when you started the explanation was, I, I thought he had forgotten. I don't no, know that he's telling me nothing. Dancing around the truth. Ryan and I were like squinting at each other. Ryan was like, I know exactly what. Is, I'll tell you exactly what it does. I was about to go off book and just be like, yeah, it's a chakra focus. Because that's <laughs> what it is. It's for chakra. You never uh, said the word. Uh, I didn't want to say the word. Okay. It's fine. Uh, and so, audience, you I got was that restrained. one restrained. Correct. I was restrained twice. Incorrect, which means uh, that's going to be one point to we Daniel got one. and one point to the deceivers God, at the end of that game. 
Two percent. We <laughs> got one. We got, no, one we got one point. We got yeah. one point. So stupid. And there's our final score with the uh, receivers one, one, audience at three, and contestant at four. Daniel. Daniel crushed it. Uh, you and you and Gavin. You're way are, better are at highest, this than Blake. Highest points so far. Well. And to be uh, expected. that means <laughs> here's that, here's the, what upsets me. I had to tell the truth. I was gonna say it was a butt plug. <laughs> that That's means, immediately what I wanted uh, to say. You put it in time and spin it. <laughs> the first time ever. Good. The deceivers collectively are tonight's. And damn, ladies and gentlemen, that before hurts. we go away from this episode, before we give our outro, we did promise a never before seen clip from Haunter season two, and this is the time that we are showing you that. So. uh Take a little look-see at Haunter season two. There was a kid named Eugene, and apparently he knew something like about a crime, like they were interrogating him. He got kind of mouthy with a nurse. Well, the nurse punched Eugene so hard in the, in the head that he got a brain hemorrhage and died. That's been a bloody hard punch. So I'm gonna act out the scene. All right. <laughs> uh, I can only assume that it went something like this. The nurse went. Oh, Eugene, we're at it again! You gotta tell me, Eugene, all right? I need to know what you know about this crime. Get mad! I'm getting mad! I haven't punched anything! Eugene! Tell me what I wanna know, ghost! Jesus. Getting worked up. If you're here, let us know! I want you here, Eugene. <laughs> So if you want to see me get punchy with some ghosts, you're going to have to watch Haunter Season 2, which comes out uh, January 30th. That's tomorrow if you're watching this live. Uh, but if you're watching it on the site and you're a first member on the 30th, go watch it right now. You just finished the episode of Chump, so go watch Haunter Season 2. And for everyone else, go watch Haunter Season 1. It is available for free. If you're not a first member on the site, you can watch all of that and get yourself all hyped up to binge watch Season 2. But that is our show this week. That is our Haunter-themed episode. Thank you very much for joining everybody. And uh, we're going to see you guys next week right here on Chump. Thanks for watching, everyone. Let us know in the comments who fooled you. And if you like the show, give us a like. And as a reminder, Haunter Season 2 is available for first members on the Rooster Teeth site. So go give it a watch. Thanks, people. <laughs>